the Danny Cutler Show on Independent Radio, KWSS 93.9 FM, and we are streaming at kwss.org. Uh, those of you who are on Zoom right now, you can definitely see her. But if you're listening on 93.9 FM, well, you'll just have to go catch the Zoom later. I have got one of the members of Cahokia in downtown Phoenix on Roosevelt Row with me. This is Unique Yazi. I'm so excited to speak with her. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm you? glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to be speaking with you. And I'm really glad that Indie Film Fest has brought us together because I've heard so many great things about Cahokia. So when Maddie was like, do an interview, I was like, yes, we're going to do an interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I like meeting the connectors of downtown Phoenix. Uh, oh. He's definitely one of those, him and Peta. Oh, both of them, wonderful people and just so invested in our community and in Phoenix and just much love for both of them, for sure. Um, we will get to Indie Film Fest and the connection there in just a little bit, but I'm not sure. I mean, you're right there on Roosevelt Row. Um, a lot of people I'm sure drive by and don't even realize it's there unless they're walking around on a first Friday. <laughs> So tell me, Unique, what is Cahokia? Yeah, so Cahokia, well, I'll start with the name. Um, Cahokia was a real place in time. Um, it's a pre-colonial city that existed um, between, um, in the Illinois area uh, and slowly into the, the mound culture area. <clears throat> but basically, it was a place where Indigenous people would gather to innovate, cultivate, and share ideas. Um, and they would come from all different regions of Turtle Island. And Turtle Island is just a, another way that we talk about um, the North American continent, which includes um, anywhere from Mexico down below to um, South America, all the way up to Canada and further up. So. Um, indigenous people would come, they would bring their, their goods to trade, um, all of their knowledge that they had kind of created for their communities and they would share. Um, and so when we learned about Cahokia, we were like, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be cool if there was a modern day version of that place? Um, and you had uh, today's indigenous people coming together to share ideas and innovate um, for what the future holds for us. So that's where Cahokia got its name, um, but we are a co-create a retail space and a gallery space in downtown Phoenix. Um, we're located on the bottom floor of what was the linked building, but is now called Altura. Okay. Um, it's the largest building um, in Roosevelt Row, or at least in this area, um, and it's on 3rd Street and McKinley. Okay. So we're still a little bit off the beaten path, but I think we're trying to gain traffic as, you know, as being part of the sponsor of Indie Film Festival, just letting people know that we're here and that we're doing First Friday shows, we're doing all sorts of community activation that includes the arts and multimedia channels and um, that's what we're about. We just want to bring people into this space and indigenize it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what is the, I mean, this might seem like an obvious question, but what is the importance of having a dedicated space for indigenous peoples in, in the down, especially the downtown area? Yeah, so we are an indigenous led creative platform for placekeeping. Um, and those are a lot of big terms that we use whenever we um, at least vocalize what we do. Um, so we're indigenous led and that means that um, my partner and myself, we are the owners of this of of Cahokia, but um, we decentralized our decision making and it's actually a community led space. Um, and so we have members and we have ambassadors that contribute and they range from creatives in the arts to creatives in the digital fields and all the way to social entrepreneurs um, who are invested in their communities. And so um, this space really allows us to practice and redefine our narratives together. Um, and a lot of it is based in storytelling and art making and um, creative expression, but also consulting. Um, there, there's a lot of things that transpire in this place. There's a lot of layering um, of ideas. And I feel like the need for this space was such a, was such a big, um, 
big idea that we tried to figure out how we could um, begin to talk about placekeeping in a way that is future forward. Um, and placekeeping for us is also is a mechanism that works with placemaking. Um, and a lot of times people only talk about placemaking, meaning that they're trying to define a place um, for the arts using public art or public creativity um, as a means or a vehicle for that. Um, that communication um, and so like you do it in parks you do it in you know walls that's why you have walls and then you have sculptures you know along the road and so people really try and keep the memories alive with art or with those storytelling mechanisms but one of the things that we started to see was the erosion right of creativity and the erosion of story um, and that's where placemaking comes into play. It's really just being um, a part of a community and having that social fabric intact. And so that we are telling full stories and history of a place, not just space. Mm -hmm. um, and so place, this is um, the Atham and Peeposh land. It's their ancestral, ancestral uh, historic lands of uh, people that they, um, people that they pretty much came from and their relatives in the distant past. So um, for us to be here, it's just re redefining what that narrative is and just saying like, look, you know, even though we were removed and we were moved into reservations and all over Arizona, um, we wanted to find a space here that allows us to talk about our story and allows us to visualize our story and amplify it in the ways that we want. Nice, Ken, so, I mean, that's fascinating. Can you give a specific, a little more specific example of like if somebody were to come in the space and what is one example of what they would use Cahokia for specifically, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. So um, Cahokia is one of the first uh, co-create and gallery spaces that have right. been built in downtown Phoenix for the last 10 years, maybe more. Um, it, it were the first tenants of this space. It was built for galleries. So it had it already came prefabricated with the um, the track lighting and the railing on the side to kind of hang larger pieces. Um, but it also incorporated a co-create mechanism. Um, and so we have a conference room, we have a workshop room in the back, we have another glass room area. So there's a lot of space to do different sorts of things. So so when you walk into this space, what you will first see, which you can see behind me, is our retail space. And our retail space is outfitted with um, all of our different ambassadors and members that have product lines or want to create a product line and allows them to sell their goods here. Um, it's also something that we encourage people to learn more about, like how to sustain, sustain themselves um, in business. And then we also support them in that venture mm -hmm. as far as, um, you know, creating product, what licenses do you need to hold, um, what mechanisms do you need to um, incorporate into your business if you're going from just hobby to actual mm -hmm. like merchandising. Yeah. Um, and so like you'll see that and that's always up and we kind of move it around all the time. But um, a lot of our furniture and our desks and everything have wheels on it. And we have a multi-use space um, that's a larger space um, in the main area. And it is used for events. Um, we will have a first Friday event this weekend or this uh, this first Friday. Mm -hmm. It starts at 6 p.m. and it's going to have Randy Boogie. He has um, a an opening of an exhibit and all of his new work that is coming out. Um, and he just opened last week in LA. Um, he also ha has done shows in Albuquerque. So we're really happy to bring him in. Um, and that's just one version of an event, but we've had, um, you know, workshops, we've had um, panel speaking, which is one of the things that um, we're going to be helping the Indie Film Festival with, um, but also like dedicated space for art. Um, a lot of right now we're in the process of building out our gallery and creating um, a sustained mechanism to have art always on display. Um, and so, yeah, we just have like a bunch of different things. The cool thing is that, um, we really open it up to our members and ambassadors to really create a space that they want to be in. And so we do that by proposals and people will come and want to collaborate and they'll ask like, hey, can wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And we just respond with, oh my God, that would be so <laughs> cool if you did that. <laughs> and then it just grows and grows and grows. So really 
this space is kind of evolving over time and it's really been like a really cool hub for all these ideas to actually take uh, place. That's fantastic. And I love that it's, it's not just an, another art gallery, you know, it's, it's the way the space works is it's meant to help educate as well. Uh, you know, you have, you know, it is a creative space, but you can use that art and learn how to build off that and create your own business. And I love that you have people on hand who can help somebody who, who might not know where to go for those resources or, or how to do that. And, and you provide that for them, even if you have to bring it in from outside, but they know that they have the one place they can go and they can get that kind of support. And I think that's just fantastic because so, I mean, I feel like everybody should, everyone has the opportunity to own a business and sell their art and, and do it in a way that it can be their livelihood, but so many people don't do it because they just don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. And also just like really vocalizing what social entrepreneurism is, right? Um, mm -hmm. Most actually I should take that back all artists are social entrepreneurs yes. because they're coming they're coming from a place um, where either their past or their history kind of affected the direction that they were going and now they're using that in their art right and they built up those skills and built up those um, those aspects of putting the art together to tell their story or to influence people around them through their art. And so social entrepreneurism is like that vehicle to kind of talk about all these ways um, that we can either skill share or that we can highlight other people's work or that we can amplify people's work. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this is really just bent on knowing that we are a collective community. We are a collective um, uh, just vibe. We want this to exist. We want people to exist seven years down the road, right, and have clean water and have, um, you know, what they deserve to as humans um, in their communities. So we really vocalize, um, you know, issues that are facing the Indigenous communities and Latinx communities. Um, we have a lot of partners that kind of crossover into both of those areas, but really we're just trying to um, to amplify the story of the um, just the underrepresented communities that exist out there in a very, very like vocal place, which is Roosevelt Row. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And the connections with Roosevelt Row, seeing how Roosevelt Row has, has just grown over the years is just amazing and how it has become just an extended community, family, if you will. And I, I mean, and it's a perfect place for Indie Film Fest as well, because a lot of those indie films are coming from those places where those stories need to be told and they need that platform. Oh yeah, we are so excited that Deidre Peaches is gonna have a panel discussion, you know, focusing on indigenous issues mm -hmm. and really talking about water and resources and um, having it with people that are also incorporated in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, this place, Cahokia, was really just a, um, just kind of a brainchild of us needing to be creative together um, and finding that space to be creative. So uh, we're really excited to have that paneling here and to listen to the conversation and support just all the action that's happening around it. Yeah, and that is happening Friday night. Um, that is, ha there's so many things happening on Friday night. It starts out at the Churchill for the mixer and then mm -hmm. at the welcome center is when the screenings are going to happen and uh, there and at the the monarch Inn across the street there across and, the way yeah across the way so that's nice you have two places where you'll see the screenings and then i don't i think it's happening simultaneously uh the panel discussion. yeah they're gonna be short yeah there's gonna be short films so it'll allow people to move around right and really like get a full tour of roosevelt row and the partners that are involved and some of the places that they're highlighting um the videos at so it's definitely going to be a fun night. You'll be able to like walk around and see some really good stories. Um, our our discussion starts at 8 p.m. So wonderful. Be wonderful. there. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. I'm going to try and sneak away because KWSS will be out there for the screenings as on, well. Yeah, on the Roosevelt Row side. So I want to. I'll, I'll definitely have to come sneak away and and yeah. check out one of the panels. So that is happening Friday, the February 11th during the Indie Film Festival. And um, how can people find out more about Cahokia? 
Yeah, so we have a website. It's um, cahokiaphx.com. That's C-A-H-O-K-I-A phx.com and then we also are on all social media platforms tiktok um where else are we uh i mentioned tiktok because that's the, like the biggest one we're on local <laughs> sure. buzz if you haven't downloaded local buzz please get it um we are also on instagram facebook um linkedin and Everywhere. we've just kind of like yeah we outreach <laughs> but it, you can follow us on cahokia phx as well Wonderful. Well, Unique, thank you so much for spending some time with me. And uh, I can't wait to see you at Indie Film Fest. Yeah, thank you for the great conversation. Of course. Thank you.